Hey, I'm Daryl Cagle at MSNBC.com. I'm here talking with Michaela Reed and Jen Sorensen at uh, the Editorial Cartoonist Convention, and uh, both of them are prominent cartoonists on our site, prominent women alti cartoonists. And I thought I would talk to both of them about the current state of the industry, state of the industry for alti cartoonists and for women cartoonists. Uh, Jen, tell us about your views of what's happening now. Well, um, I've lost about a third of my clients, I would say. Um, it hasn't been a total catastrophe, but certainly, um, you know, the Village Voice, that, that was my largest client, and they dropped all of their syndicated comics. The whole chain did. Now I was only in the Village Voice, so it wasn't as bad for me as some other people. But, um, I, you know, I, my opinion is that the, the well-run al alternative newspapers will survive, hopefully. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's just a matter of ad revenue being really, really bad right now. And uh, hopefully, down the road, things will somewhat return. You choose to draw on an alti multi panel wordy format, which is different than uh, mainstream newspapers typically like to fill that standard hole of theirs. Um, why make that choice at this time? To be a wordy cartoonist? To be it's, an alti style it's, cartoonist. It's, it's not necessarily, it, it, the choice was not necessarily made with a view towards the paper at the end uh, point, I think. Um, actually, I started drawing multi-panel wordy style cartoons when I was cartooning for my college newspaper, the Harvard Crimson, which certainly was not, you know, the, the whole was the same size. I just squeezed more panels. And, you know, it, it, it's interesting, too, because we're here at the AEC. We're here at what was traditionally the the home of mainstream editorial cartoonists, but I think really more and more now we're kind of all in the same group. I mean, the number of alternative cartoonists participating in the Association of American Editorial Cartoonists, in fact, I was just nominated as vice president, has really increased over the years. I think we have, we, we do have differences, you know, we, we primarily tend to appear in different outlets, but we have a lot in common. Um, the style is completely different. I mean, while sometimes mainstream cartoonists do draw in more multiple panels, Tom Tull is an example of, uh, of a mainstream cartoonist who tends to, to do that a lot. I think I, I was drawn, I, I'm, I'm into comics as much as I am into cartoons. I was inspired by things like Mad Magazine, which were very wordy and nerdy and funny and full of parodies and lots of jokes. And I almost it almost hurts to just give the, the reader one single joke when I really want to set something up in detail and bring it along and, and, and develop the idea in a way that... Now, now, what makes that hard is not only do we have alternative newspapers having uh, some of them running fewer cartoons or eliminating cartoons due to budget issues, but some of them are actually shrinking the cartoons. I still have one client that runs my cartoon at a half page, and I love them because I can always I can do six panels, I can do nine panels, and it'll all be perfectly readable. But another, and another client that runs at a pretty reasonable size. But some of the clients I, I've had, you know, it, it comes out like this. So for them, I do do one panel. Well, do you get the sense now that um, with the market shrinking, uh, that cartoonists who draw in other than the standard acceptable style are um, getting squeezed more than the standard cartoonists? You know, we're all getting squeezed. I mean, the stories here are so similar. It's, it's funny, we had a panel that Jen and I were both on here called, you know, is Aldi the new mainstream? Is it the future? I'm like, well, it might be the future, but not necessarily in a good way. It's 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 the future in that, you know, traditionally alternative cartoonists have always been freelancers. Some of them are syndicated and we're self-syndicated, but we've always been freelancers. And more and more, we're seeing the mainstream uh, cartoonist style who are staffers be become more in our boat and have to survive more in the way that we have been all along. I mean, Jenny. Right, we've, we've been, I guess, a bit more diversified, you could say. And, uh, you know, that doesn't really offer complete protection when you know entire chains of newspapers are falling apart but um yeah, it, I can't imagine what it would be like to be a staff cartoonist just relying on that one main client um, that, that would be very tough I don't envy them now you're both also unusual for being women cartoonists and Jen you wrote a nice long blog piece a couple of years ago on uh, why you think there are so few women cartoonists. I think, what is it, about 5% in comic strips? It's small. It's really small. I mean, there, there's I've, I've, plenty of times I've opened, if you're talking about comic strips, I've opened a newspaper and looked at a comics page and seen no cartoons by women except maybe Kathy, and not even necessarily then. Um, or there'll be a lot of cartoons about women, but they're not actually by women. 
um, it's it's a, it's very tiny, and it continues to be that way. I, I think what I also you know we also participate in um, comics conventions because we we're kind of involved in the alt comics world as well, and I think there I do see more of a growing number of women. Yes, but not as much still in, in editorial cartooning. And Jen, why so. why do you think? Um, well, as I said in, in the article, there's just been sort of a lack of precedent, and the more precedent there is, the more female cartoonists that there will be. And I'm sure you could trace it back historically to you know gender roles going back through the, the centuries. Um, but I was going to say, you know, I was talking to one of the cartoonists from Egypt uh, visiting here, and uh, he, he was telling me how he was so happy to meet a, a female cartoonist, because um, you know, in Egypt there's only one or two professional women cartoonists, or editorial cartoonists. And I was like, you know, it's really not that much better here, considering the population of Egypt versus the U.S. Well, you know, one thing that's kind of interesting that I noticed is that, uh, you know, we get lots and lots of unsolicited submissions. And the percentage of men to women in unsolicited submissions is the same. Or more, 95% men, 5% women. I'm sure you see that at United Media. It's not just the people who are out there. It's also the people who are trying to get into the field. I think part of that is to the models. Like when you see... I don't think... I, I don't subscribe to the idea that there's like some special female point of view. Um, or that our cartoons are specially, uh, but at the same time, when you see cartoon women, women cartoonists might might certain women cartoonists might choose to cover different topics. I mean, I do do a lot of feminist cartoons, um, sometimes for women's magazine, uh, not women's magazines like like Glamour, but women's magazines like Ms. or or Bitch magazine or um, things of that nature, and. So, so part of it could just be the the role models thing. I don't know. It's it's so hard because I've it, it's hard to ask a woman cartoonist why aren't there more women cartoonists because ever since I was a kid I've always been this way. So I've heard it. Argued. Why are other women not that way? I do not. I was a tomboy. Yeah, but part of it's also access. Part of it's mentoring. You know, a lot of a lot of cartoonists get a lot of mentorship along the way, and I was fortunate in having lots of mentors, uh, both male and female, who really encouraged me. Um, right. Clay Bennett, Ted Rawl, and all kinds of. I've got to say that Tom Tomorrow, the male all day cartoonists have have all been great. I mean, very supportive. Tom Tomorrow, Ted Rawl, Lloyd Dangle, Ruben Bowling. Yeah, um, I don't want to leave anyone out, but they've all they're been great. Totally supportive. And it's interesting. Keep night. Yes. Though that this seems to be a phenomenon that crosses over all different kinds of cartooning, you see the same thing in animation, same thing in comic books. Yeah, absolutely. You even see the same thing in amusement park caricature artists. Yeah, and, and again, it's, it's that it's that hard thing because I've always, I mean, part of part of what you need to be a cartoonist, I mean, it's a couple of things. You need to be really opinionated. You need to be pretty comfortable with just getting your opinions out there. You have to have a thick skin because you know we get the hate mail. Um, and a lot of times when you're a female commentator, you get some pretty gross, misogynistic hate mail. Um, you get called a lot of certain names. I mean, I'm not, and part of it too is, I mean, I've, I've actually, there's also, even though the discrepancy in women wanting to become cartoonists is, is high, there's also more women who end up quitting cartooning. Um, there's a lot of great women cartoonists who have kind of stopped cartooning. They've done it for a little while, they were really good at it, but the finances were just too hard. I mean, a lot of, there are actually a lot of male cartoonists whose like, wives do a lot of work and support for them. I think Sydney Wilkinson wrote a piece about this a while back. She said, you know, a lot of women cartoonists lack a wife. Uh, and that, that's part of it too.